So if you log on, so you go to, sorry, go to kahoot.it. Okay. Kahoot.it. And you'll be given this prompt. Put in this game pin. And then put in your nickname. No naughty nicknames. Or I'll bounce you out again. And you are bounceable. <laughs> You have to, you, yeah, so your nickname will pop up here. <laughs> Are we all on? IT, dot IT, not IE. Dot IT. So mm. your the the URL is Kahoot dot IT, and that should bring up for you this prompt. Put in your game pin, and hit enter, and then it should give you an opportunity to put in your nickname. Is there anyone still trying to log on, or is everyone who wants to be on on? Are you okay, Suzanne? As you can see, this is very IT uh, Wi-Fi dependent, so. I think that's good. Might knock off the light, a couple of lights there, Suzanne, would you mind? Now you have an option, when you're doing this with 400 uh, people, it takes a while for them to log on. You mightn't wait, you know, you might move on or somebody might come in late to your lesson. You have an option to keep the um, pin, the game pin, visible the whole way through. So somebody who's late to it can log in or if the Wi-Fi, if the, if the access throws them out again, they can get back in again. Okay? Yeah? Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Happy to go? Everyone on? Yeah? yeah? Okay. So what I thought we'd do is we'll do a short little kahoot about a subject very close to my heart. And uh, I want to assess your knowledge of this subject. So I'm using this as if I was perhaps going to teach around this topic down the line. And I just want to suss out where you're at in terms of your knowledge, your prior knowledge. Um, first. And it also gives me an opportunity or gives you an opportunity to see where your own knowledge and learning is in comparison to everyone else. Because part of the problem in the big class and in any class if people are afraid to ask a question or say so, it's because they're afraid to be wrong. And they don't realise there's probably 40 more in the room also thinking the same thing. But, you know, whereas you can see that. So this is formative assessment for me as a teacher, but it's formative assessment or knowledge acquisition for the students as well because they can see gosh I'm not the only one who thought that okay so we'll get, we'll get going seven questions are you ready now this is timed it's about 20 seconds for each one <laughs> so the clock ticks down Coming up, it should come up, be coming up on your smart device if you're logged in. Is it coming up? <laughs> okay, let's see how we're doing. Ooh, Paul, you're top of the class at the moment. So Meatloaf won a Grammy for best solo rock performance for which of the following songs? Bat Out of Hell, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, Dead Ringer for Love, or I'd Do Anything for Love? So you're looking at the answer on the screen and clicking the symbol on your phone. <laughs> Ooh, now... Wow, okay, so obviously when I'm planning teaching my module on meatloaf, I'll be doing a lot of work around his songs, 
the awards he's won. Look at the assumptions that are being made there by most of my class. Are you going to sing? No. Nope. <laughs> Anna, you're leading the posse there. Which of the following characters did Meatloaf play in the Rocky Horror Picture Show? And you'll hear, I'll turn it down now, Pip, but I just want you to hear, you can hear the kind of the countdown noise. Now, do you see it stopped at, it stopped at three seconds. It stopped at three seconds because you'd all answered. It didn't go to the full 20 because you were finished. Paul. Oh. Passing out Anna again. In two out of three ain't bad. What were the two things? To want you and love What are the two things? Sorry, but Very good. I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that. Won't do what? Say I love you, lie or cheat. He actually says a ruder thing. Sorry? Okay. So you press the thing and then the spiral comes up. Yeah, that's just. It's just sometimes. I guess. Sometimes you get it correct. It could be our wife after you've hit it. Okay. You're waiting for all the other responses to come in, and if all the other responses are in, then you'll see. Yes, or, or if it times out, and then you'll see which one you got right. So some of, you, some of those questions you answered very quickly, so we didn't even count down 20 seconds, because you would all answer. Now, in, when you have a group of 400, you go to 20 seconds. You, you can time it for longer, you can, depending on the question. You can give them a minute, you can give them five seconds. But for reading, and I always read the questions, as well as put them up for people who may not be quick enough at the reading end of things. That can put off other people though, you know, so. Six out of seven. Which of the following wrote most of Meatloaf's songs? Meatloaf himself, Jim Steinman, Chris Christopherson, or Bert Bacharach? Very good. Lisa, fastest finger on the button. And Meatloaf is the greatest singer of all time, the greatest performer of all time, or the greatest artist of all time. You're all right. <laughs> so, let's see, overall, Lisa, if you come out on top, top scorer. So overall, and your prize, Lisa, for your office, is a lovely photo of Meatloaf. Well done. <laughs> Uh, you can then ask for feedback and results. Um, so you can ask the students to rate what they've just done, the learning, whether they feel they've learned from it, would they recommend it to others, and so on. Okay? Um, and that can, you can download your results later. The Kahoot will store results. I think it's the last three times you've run the same game. Uh, it'll store the results and you can see which questions overall were answered correctly and not. It also, I always use it with nicknames. I ask the students to put in there because um, the whole reason I'm using it is because they don't want to speak because they don't want, they're afraid to be wrong and be identified or whatever. Um, and you couldn't rely on it, you know, for, to use for attendance or something like that because somebody can be logging in as someone else. You, you, you've no way through it. And, it. and it just gives them a safe space to answer questions that you've given them or whatever. Um, sorry, I don't know where I am now. It's, uh, well, it's a way to set it all up though, because obviously it's a question. It's 
quick. You know, it depends how long. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, it takes. Sorry, let me just find my little thing here because I'll go through that with you now. Um, yes, that's what I said. It, it, it depends on what you're using it for and what the, what the quiz is. I use that there at the beginning of a session to ask you a few quick questions which might help me then decide on how I'm teaching a particular topic or whatever. Um, and, you know, if, if dep it, it depends on what you're asking them, the length of time it takes to put together. You type in your questions, you type in your range of choices, um, you can then drag in images, which I did for most of them. You can connect to YouTube and you can uh, take a piece of film clip and you can decide how much of that clip. So you can edit the number of seconds that you are showing, like I did with the meatloaf song there. You can edit how much of that you're going to show and then decide how much more time following completion of that um, YouTube video that you will allow them to answer the question. Okay, so there's lot, so it, it, I can't give you an answer in terms of how long it takes, but I find it quite efficient. And once you've made it, you've made it. Would it be really useful for us um, to review the previous class? Sorry. Yes. That's so, okay. yeah, yeah. So you can, so I've used it in a few different ways. I suppose just to g give you, this was the reason I, I'm not the most technologically uh, advanced person. And, um, but in the large class, so that BA group, I, we had done the, the post-it ideas in terms of gathering information about attitudes and beliefs. We had done the co-teaching in terms of getting their voices around particular threshold concepts. This is a third approach that we're using in those taught modules to get the voice of the student and to formatively assess what they understand. Um, in order to do this, I got some money thanks to the Teaching and Learning Committee and Anita, um, and I went to the guy who created it. Um, who, he is a third level lecturer in Norway. He lectures in computer programming, so he has a background in computery stuff. And he developed this because he has 2,000 students in his first year module divided into four classes, three classes of 600 and one of 200. And uh, he devised it for the exact same reason that I'm using it, it's for formative assessment and to get the student voice. Um, and uh, it's, it's now supported by, um, as far as I can work out, uh, by a company um, called We Are Human in London, and they, they support this particular programme. It's free. Um, it's free to use, you, any, any of us can access it. Um, the largest class, one of the things I wanted was, was um, a, a programme that would be easy to use with a large group. Some of the programmes are limited by size. You can only use it with 50 or 60 or whatever. And I needed it to be big enough to, to carry uh, three or 400 students easily uh, on it. Um, and this does that. Uh, the largest group, I think, I bet, no, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I better not. I think it's 1,000 is the largest group that have done a Kahoot, but I could be wrong on that. There's a huge amount of information on just Google Get, uh, get Kahoot um, and log in. Anyone can log in and, and set up an account. There's lots of information on that website and also lots of videos on YouTube by um, people who are using it um, in their in second and, first, second and third level. Um, they, there are frequently asked questions, and I discovered last Sunday when I was preparing this, there is um, the support includes, now it's not live, but you can email a query and they come back to you. Like on Sunday, they were back to me within a couple of hours on a Sunday evening. I was amazed um, with my query. So, and I'd never used that facility before. Um, so um, it's just very well supported. It works well. The students love it. They absolutely love it. It's, it's, it, it just, I, I used it for the first time with, with my first year B.Eds on Tuesday and it just lit up the room. They loved it and I had a little prize as well, a little, um, that's the thing, if you, if you go buying a prize the first time, you need to have your prize every time. <laughs> <laughs> so they get a muffin, a caramel muffin if, they, if, they, uh, if, if the, whoever the winner is or whatever. Um, 
It's just another way to get the voice of the student. I wouldn't overuse any of these. I wouldn't say co-teaching is great, it works. Let's do it in all our sessions. That's overkill. Um, likewise with Kahoot. I, I, it, it is just a tool to get the voice of the student. I wouldn't overuse it. And if lots of other people start picking it up and using it across our BED program, I might reduce my usage and move into something else. Because you want to show, again, going back to what we were saying earlier about explicitly modeling for, for our student teachers, a range of approaches to access learning or to enable learning, okay? Um, and not just rely on one, great, it works, let's keep using it. Or, uh, it just, it becomes boring then. And, and it loses the edge that it has. Um, you, somebody had asked, I wanted also to get feedback about what they understood in live time, in the classroom, and so on. There's other ways you can get feedback on what they understand, but it's not on the spot, in that minute, in that 50 minutes that you're standing up in front of them. Um, and, I, and I wanted them to see where the things they understood, what, um, how that matched with what other people understood, that they could contextualize their own understanding and actually feel a bit safer around the things they did know or didn't know. If I, you know, nine of you got the same wrong answer in one of those cahoots. So there's a real safety in seeing that um, and understanding, actually, uh, we haven't learned this, so how would we know it? Um, and it's fun, okay? You're not standing there talking at them. Um, it's, it's interactive and they can, and they love it. They really enjoy using this. Um, so to set it up, somebody's asked me how to set it up. You go to getcahoot.com and you register. So you need your username and a password. I think your email address will be fine as a username and then you set up your own password. There are three modes, okay? You have quiz mode, which I've just used with you. And with quiz mode, you're attributed points and Kahoot seems to work it out on speed and accuracy. Now, when you have, I had a student come up to me last term who said, I'm really worried, I came 252nd. I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> Kahoot can't give a tie. So it makes a decision. So if 50 people get an answer right in the same speed, it just makes a decision. It, 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 it sieves them out into, into some sort of an order. Uh, so that was something I hadn't even thought about. And, and you know, so now I'm clearer, you know, don't be worrying if you get 200 and something. That does not mean you're pitching in at 200 and something in the class. Um, and you can set the timing. So I set 20 second timings there. You can set them for longer. If you wish your question to be longer, so, that, so every, when, you, when you type in your question and your answers, you are limited in the number of characters. And it's a fair limitation. It's, 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 it's a good limitation in terms of what people can read. If you wish your question or your scenario to be longer, you need to do it on a PowerPoint, save it as a PDF and drag it in as a picture. But you need to give the students much more time because they have more to read. OK, so you'd need to do your setting for a question like that in terms of maybe a minute because you want to incorporate how long it'll take them to read it as well as to answer it. OK, um, and I, as I said, I read the questions as well as I read them al aloud um, to help people who maybe mightn't be as quick at reading or we have a number of students with dyslexia and that sort of thing in, in the classes. Um, I've also used survey mode. And survey mode, it's very similar, to be honest, but there's just no, um, it's not a competition, it's not a game. So they, uh, on, using survey mode, you might use that to survey opinion, attitudes, beliefs. I might not use my post-it thing anymore and use Kahoot instead to, uh, to get those. The only problem with that is that I then need to list the attitudes. I'm not getting it from them, I'm making the choices. Um, and that's the only thing, whereas when, when you ask an open question that people can write anything down to on a post-it, I get more important feedback on that. Okay. Sorry, yeah. In terms of the survey, can you retrieve the data? Uh, can you retrieve the data from the survey f subsequently? Yes. Or is it just in the moment? No. You can retrieve it subsequently. And I think my understanding with Kahoot is that for each, so I've just done a game with you. 
it will hold the results for the most recent, for the last three times I played that game. So your cohort one, I might do it with another group and then another group. And then when I go to group four, your data will disappear because you were group one. Relatively recently, but they now will store all your results. Ah, okay. And Only relatively recently. Yeah, again. no, I, I, they're, they're constantly changing. It's, it's a very, um, they're still working on it, and there's new things coming in on Kahoot all the time. But it's easy to. It allows you to download it in an Excel spreadsheet mics, or sorry. indeed put it into your Google Drive as an Excel spreadsheet as well. Go straight to it. Sorry. So it, it uh, allows you to save all of your results and it saves them either as an Excel file or straight into your Google Drive, and then you have it forevermore then. Yeah, Pip. My question is about equity. Do you find any issues with students not having access to devices so they can't participate in Kahoot in class? Yeah, some I ask, because sometimes I, I can see I have three or 400 in front of me and there's only 200 logged on. And there are, it's not just about equity. Some people may not have their device with them or have a device. And they can, I, what I say to them at the beginning is, if you don't have a device or if you don't have access, pair up with the person beside you. And be, between you, make a decision on what you think the answer is. Um, the bigger issue, though, uh, is uh, electricity. So, for example, there are three ways that I've used Kahoot. I've used them as I did with you just now, which was quick quick quiz to see where you're at and now I'm going to teach you about meatloaf and that, so that's I'm gathering your prior knowledge in order to think about how, what I need to focus on and so on rather than assuming you know everything or know nothing or you use it at the end to as I did with my first years on Tuesday so I asked them seven or eight questions I had done two 50 minute sessions on general learning disabilities mild moderate severe and profound learning disabilities and at the end we had a quick kahoot um, and a couple of key concepts out, out of that to see what they had retained and so that they could see, okay, so do it at the end. Or somebody mentioned you could do the general learning disability at the top of the next session just to remind them and then move on to the next topic and that's another way. Another really, really good way to use Kahoot is instead of your PowerPoint. So Kahoot is your teaching tool or your visual and you survey mode is quite good for that or quiz mode you can use whatever mode you want and you put up a statement whether it's a question or that has right or wrong answers or whether it's a question that has no right or wrong answers it's values opinions and beliefs and then you move to teach and work around that so it's the whole session Kahoot is carrying um, your um, instead of the PowerPoint you're getting their minute by minute opinions on these key concepts and that helps you teach that idea. Loads of them didn't log on for that or if they logged on they fell out of it again. And um, one of the students after it, I said, why, why, are, why do they not, they know where to plug in their phones, they didn't want to run out of battery. It was pure technical, practical things. Um, and, and she said, you're much better off, more people will log on if you do the quiz quickly. So it's just, there's nowhere to plug in. We've nothing under our desks where they can plug in and you're on for an hour and they're starting to lose connectivity, especially on your phone where you're linked to Wi-Fi, which eats um, uh, your battery. So I've never even thought of it. Um, so, so they didn't log up. But, and it's a pity, and maybe it's something that organisations like this need to think about because actually it's probably the best way to use Kahoot, uh, whether you use whatever mode you use. I've never used discussion mode, but I have looked at it. And to be honest, I find very little, I can't see any difference between discussion and survey mode. I just can't see what the difference is myself. Um, it's, it, it can be used with loads of different groups, big groups, small groups, you know. Um, and uh, for Android devices, they can download an app, and that's a relatively, that's another new thing. There's, that app has only appeared in the last while. They are developing, to the best of my knowledge, don't know where Stan is, they're, they're developing one for Apple devices. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not yet ready. Yeah. I mean, it's, still, it's quite simple to use it on the internet anyway, but yeah. I suppose I sat in on a session with Anne Marie. And it's amazing the difference, like even if they had it available as, you know, 
as a, a shortcut on their phone or device that would speed things up because it does take them a while to it takes them a while to log. I, I was you prompt there to download as an app. Were you yeah. prompted? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually new since last year. That's new. So, yeah, yeah, that's new. So they're working on it constantly. Um, or you can log in. The, what we did was the long way of logging in, but it's reliable as well. Yeah, but it does take 400 people a while to click, 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 type, you know, and get in to it. Um, the, the, in terms of using it, I told you the, the, the modes that I used it in terms of assessment for learning. And it's... It's really, really useful on the spot, um, particularly if you use it at the top of a lesson like we did just now, because immediately it focuses me on what uh, the students know and what they don't know or what they believe, depending on what you're using or whatever. And I can, it's not that I'm going to be teaching something different that I would have planned, but uh, you might focus, I might make, divide my time in that session a wee bit differently, or I might draw, be more explicit in the attention that I would draw to certain ideas. If I'm clear, they had to, you know what, they didn't get that. Like there was one uh, last week, I, um, uh, on Tuesday, um, a, a question that I asked, and I'd say 55% got the answer wrong. And, uh, and I had, you know, in my head, I had been very explicit about how I had taught that. And I have a feeling I know one of the reasons that, that, that they, miss, they have this perception. But now I'm able to go back to that highlight it again, explain because I know that they don't know and, and, and we can make those links for them. Um, so I, I have found it very useful like that. It lends itself to certain things you're teaching and certain classes. It doesn't necessarily, you know, I wouldn't, as I said, like co-teaching, I wouldn't be using this everywhere. I would make my decision about where I'm going to use this and it's my third, at the moment, this is my third approach to formative assessment in those big classes and I'm hoping to the what the limitations of this um, first of all it takes a while for them to log on they get used to it so by the, if you by the time you're doing it the third time they're they know how to do it they're they're popping on very quickly uh, the ranking of the respondents in the quiz and so on power and can, connectivity sometimes I think Susanna did you get bounced out out there earlier I did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, so sometimes, like if we're all hanging from the, the Wi-Fi at the same time, they're all logging on to this. I don't know why, but some of them get thrown out of it again. Um, and, and that's why you have settings. When you, organize, when you set up your um, Kahoot, it's really important that there's, there's, a, there's a question that's, and you, you answer yes or no to them. One of them is, uh, do you want to show the game pin the whole way through? The answer to that is absolutely yes, you do want to show it because you want them to be, if somebody comes late, if somebody gets bounced out like Suzanne did, if somebody thought they'd forgotten their phone and then they suddenly find it on question three, you want them to be able to log in even if it's halfway through so that they can take part. So always answer, well, my opinion, always answer yes to that. Um, yeah, if you're going to bring a muffin the first week, bring a muffin every week, okay, for the ones, for, for, for the winner. Um, uh, as for someone like me, I do not have a background in technology and I'm quite nervous of hitting buttons in case things explode and all of that sort of thing. There was no substitute for going to that university and seeing 600 students do that. And I, had, I found places nearer to me that were using it with groups of 40 and 50. I said, no, I want to see how this works with this big group um, and it meant that when I did it for the first time I was nervous because I'm not technology and me aren't the best buddies but not as nervous and not and I wouldn't have been experiment, experimenting on my students the way I would have been if I had not seen that in action in a similar setting to mine it was invaluable to have done that so anyone who wants to come and see it used here in a big class you're more than welcome um, there is no substitute and you sit up at the back of the room and you're looking over students shoulders and you can see what they're doing you can hear what they're saying even though in my case it was in Norwegian so I was uh, uh, extrapolating what they might have been saying but I could see the engagement sitting up at the back um, um, and as I said some people they will choose to share a device and work together 
I tend to read the questions for them because I'm afraid that there will be people in the room for whom reading is an issue and you, you need to um, just support them. Um, we've had, we'll be talking about spiralling assessment in a minute, but we have one group of students who present it to their peers in fourth year and they use Kahoot as part of their presentation. So they had taken it from what they'd seen and they used it. Um, keep the login code and uh, you can do survey during quiz mode. So say, like I, my last question was, is Meatloaf the best singer, the best performer? There's no right or wrong answer there. They're all right. So give everyone a mark. Now that's a, an opinion that you're asking for or a belief, but you can do it in quiz mode rather than hopping from one to the other if you so wish. But in that, if there's no right or wrong answer, everyone gets a mark. Everyone, all answers are right. It's the way I would do that, as opposed to all answers are wrong. Okay, so you, and you have to say, in fact, you can't have all answers wrong. You must, the, the Kahoot will not allow you to move on to the next question when you're setting it up until you attribute a correct answer. Okay, um, so this is just one tool and it's just a tool. It's it, in of itself, Kahoot doesn't do anything. It's how you use it and how, and you need to think about that and you might need to try it at the top of a topic or at the end of a topic or, you know, how you might use it. Um, the biggest limitation is, at the moment, it's a one-way Q&A. I ask the question, they give me the answer. So my next thing now for my large classes is to find something that will turn the questions backways without electronically 400 people shouting at me. So I want something that will do what Kahoot does but that students during my session can log in and ask a question in the same way like what happened here today is that as we move through, somebody put their hand up. Now, I don't know what they're going to ask and I don't know their name, but the, I want a program that will allow students to put their hand up without writing reams up here, distracting from what's going on, but that I can hop in and ask random people questions and possibly anonymously as well, so that they feel safe in asking the question. Um, and Kahoot at the moment doesn't do that. Um, so that's the next thing I'm going to investigate and I want to include that in some of my sessions. Um, again, I, la last term, I only used this last semester for the first time. I was not explicit at all about how I was using this for me, but this term I am. I'm telling the students I'm using this as formative assessment. You will hear Zita talking about assessment and how to assess formatively uh, in the moment. That's what I'm using this for. And I want you to see yourselves, you know, what you understand and how that sits and fits with everybody else. Um, and I also find, just try one thing. Give a, I was all gung-ho. I had, I, had, I had about a list of about 15 different ed tech great ideas. And I was about to, and I just thought, do you know what? No, I'll do one of these last semester. This semester, I'm going to continue with this and refine it. And I might try one more this semester. And we get that right. And then I'll move on to the next one. Um, and and, and that's, that's what, the for me, that's what I need technology to do. In my I don't want to use it just to be saying I'm using technology. I only want to use it if it helps me replicate the small class characteristics into the big classroom, that I can, that I can replicate that and give, let students be safe in answering or asking questions um, at the same time without 400 people shouting at me, albeit in typing mode. Um, so that's where I'm going to go with it from here. No research done in this. Uh, this is 100% uh, practice-based um, and a very early practice that have only started. Um, so, and there may be people, in fact, if you go onto YouTube, you'll find lots of people who are, are using this in lots of different settings. And some of the videos are really, really good and very, very informative. Um, so are there any other questions around that? Zita, yeah, just grab the mic there. Comment really. Um, I was uh, teaching the same group of students on Tuesday just after Anne Marie had finished, and um, I have been trying to engage them using formative assessment over the last couple of weeks. And I felt that I had flipped it to the point where they were now sick of me engaging them and I needed to get some feedback. So I asked them to give me a star and a wish in relation to what I've been doing. 
Um, to say they blew my mind with all the negatives, I have to say I, I needed a very strong gin and tonic afterwards, <laughs> uh, which I have to say is important in, 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 in for two reasons. One, because I think you know we need to be aware that there are different that we are all teaching potentially the same group of students. So the balance and the kinds of engagements we are requiring at different times of the day may need to be considered. We need to talk to each other. The second thing is I think that there is a, there is a backwash effect from their experience of the, the teacher-student relationship. And they can take so much of formative assessment and then they fall back and say, I want the PowerPoint, I want you to teach me and I want you to leave me alone. So I really got that back in the in the what you call it, in the in the uh, the, the uh, formative uh, feedback that I got from them. But a, a part of that, and I said this to Anne Marie earlier on, just to reinforce what you're doing, a number of the students said, "Please try Kahoot." So now, not a huge number, but a number of them did. Now, having watched, I mean, it's really helpful, Anne Marie, to, to to be able to sit here and to get feedback from you. You know, before I would I would launch in, two things strike me. And, I, and one is a positive, which I think responds to what you were saying there, which is that we often say that if, if students really know something, then they can set the assessments. So the potential for students to assume your role and to identify certain questions for their, for the, their classmates might be an interesting way of using Kahoot. The second one, which leaves me a little bit concerned, is the lack of diagnostic information. So even, you know, I'm thinking of simple things. I use thumbs and I use talk partners and I used a whole variety of things with the 400 students. Um, and frequently, if I, get, if I ask them a question, I mean, Kahoot does, isn't terribly dissimilar to thumbs, which is very quick and doesn't require any technical um, intervention. Um, and you can, follow, you can follow that very quickly by inviting students to, to, to have a talk partner, to talk to themselves for a couple of minutes, and then to give you a muddy part, a point on a post-it, which you can communicate very quickly, and they will do that because it's anonymous. Um, but I'm just thinking that, and this is my question to you, is, is there a diagnostic element to this? Um, uh, that I'm di not di a diagnostic element in terms of the results of what yes. they've answered? So yes. it's not just, okay, so yes. you can so get I'll some... I'll show you. Great. Um, you quiz results. So you can download the results of what people... Are, so I'll show you. I only, this, this was uh, why I was emailing Kahoot on Sunday because I couldn't work out how to do it. Even going on YouTube, I couldn't work out. So uh, let's say this is question one. Can you all see that now? That might be a wee bit small. Yeah. So I can see here, uh, okay, the percentage who got this question correct is 41%. I can see... Uh, the total number of students who answered it and, uh, and the average speed, I don't care about that. And I can see the spread. So I gave them four choices, one of which was correct. So I can see that 41% got it right, but actually two, see 60, nearly 70 there, not for, 70 people um, miss, didn't, okay? 70 out of about 140, 150 more. Uh, didn't get that. So now I know where the great... Is that what you mean? Not no. Me. OK. For me, for me, see, that gives me information that's, that begs more questions than answers. What it tells me is that they've got, they've got things wrong, but I don't know if it's because they didn't think long enough or they responded yeah. too quickly. And I'm not getting that feedback in the moment. So in terms of me using that to direct my teaching in the moment, which is the key issue in relation to formative feedback, um, it doesn't give me that information that I require there and then. And actually, um, it would, no, it, it's useful as a starting point, I think. Mm -hmm. And it may trigger something then like talk partners or something, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think would be useful from that point of view. But I think it's a serious limitation of the tool that it doesn't give the kind of information that it would... Uh, that is sufficiently informative. Do you mean for why me. they think this? No, but even afterwards, Anne Marie, it, it, see, because I mean, that information is interesting, but it doesn't tell me anything about their way they're thinking or why it is that they got something wrong. Yes, it, it, no, it, you, don't, exactly. you don't know why they're thinking it. Or, or it, it, yeah. and it doesn't also it doesn't also challenge them to stop and to critically review yeah. their responses and maybe then say, well, here's where I'm. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I would argue with that in favour of what um, Anne Marie was saying earlier on, and indeed the conversation I was having with Anna. It is just a tool, mm -hmm. and yeah. what it's doing is it's giving you the student voice. It's how you use it as a tool, yeah. and you use it once you leave with pedagogy. 
you, you, you don't ask them like 10 questions in a row, you ask them one question, you then talk about it, talk about why this answer is right or why this answer is wrong, and then uh, go on with your teaching, and maybe 10 minutes later ask another question and so on. Um, you don't have the entire class full of those questions uh, one straight after the other. You give them time to reflect on it. Yeah. I, I would also say, from from a teaching perspective, sorry, from from a teaching perspective, you would use the teach per share, uh, think per share method, where you you get them to have a chat with one another first to t think about it, and then to maybe iron out one another's understanding, and then answer back again, and then you get much better. Two things happen: you get much better responses from the class. But also what you get, and something we were saying earlier on, um, you don't get students getting distracted with their phones and I'm going to go on Facebook here, I'm not really going to go on Sunday because if I'm doing it with Anita, if I go on Facebook, well I'm meant to be talking with Anita about it, I'm distracting Anita too. So they're nearly self-policing one another in that respect. But it comes back to the fact, and, and, and you touched on it earlier on, it is a tool to help you with your teaching. Mm -hmm. It's not the, 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 the panacea, the perfect answer. But what I'm just thinking is that they've got, to, they've got to use the technology, so there's that time when they've got to connect and they may be flipped out or whatever else. And I'm just wondering, it, what are the advantages of this, apart from the, the record, over and above, for example, asking students to do thumbs in response to, as an alternative white to white cards, when you've got a series of multiple choice questions, or, and following that with the think, pair, share, because you get a visual immediately, and then potentially you can say, talk to the person beside you or that person up there, is you know has has something to think they they they're here and that's the correct answer talk to them and see if you can negotiate it with each other there's a transparency in these kind of methods even though they seem terribly simple there's a transparency um a factor I, there are other people who want to talk i i agree to to a point um but I think that the the tool and engaging technology in the class it's what the students are using in day-to-day -day life, they're using their phones, you've got a degree of engagement um, that you don't see with just putting up your hands. There's an excitement with using a, a new kind of a tool. And something I said to Amory earlier, um, this cuts across all kinds of students as regards engagement and participation. I've used it with adult learners, uh, Amory's used it here with uh, your student teachers, and my son is using it in secondary school. And in all of those, there's a, a huge degree of excitement and acceptance of it. So you're getting an engagement and interest, at least, in getting involved in... It's only part of the discussion, it's only part of the learning, but they're interested in kicking off that. I suppose, just while you're passing the mic over, one of the ways, as I said earlier, I think probably the best way to use Kahoot is as to support your entire session. And in that way, you do get to go in a little bit further into those, to work out why we think this, or, you know, you can, if you carry it through. I, 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 because of the feedback, oh, mind you, only from a small number of students, but because of the feedback, I could see, well, from a small number, and also the fact that they logged out again. I, I was down to maybe 100 out of three or 400 on my Kahoot because it was too long. 50 minutes but if you have it on for 50 minutes and if you're using it the whole point of using it like that is to explore because now you're getting what they understand and now you can go back and say okay now i wonder why you understand this have a chat with the person beside you write it down on a piece of paper or say it to me or whatever and you'd need to and you absolutely could do that if you carry the cahoot through the session there's the practical stuff. There's one more. In the session itself, um, just to kind of maybe respond to the question there that I think is, is happening, um, is that you get that kind of feedback on the screen where you get out of the, the say, 300, 150 went for this, 250 went for that, or whatever. The students are also getting the feedback on their phone. Um, I use this in a classroom setting of 20, 30 students. You can immediately address the concern. If you say, right, I would have thought all students should have got that right, and I can see here, right, eight out of 10, the two, what were the two thinking? You could open up a discussion forum there and then. Now, I'm not saying that you could necessarily do it with 600 students in front of you. I use this uh, actively in the classroom and there and then on the spot you can address the issue and get a bit of richness and depth and conversation. Um, maybe that would uh, address the issue that you have, you're, you're asking there. Um, one of the things I'd like to add while well, I have the mic in my hand here, um, 
is that I also have used it in the, in the Flip the Classroom, where you get the students themselves to go away, you set it as a piece of homework, they must, must log on, set up their own account and make their own quiz, design their own quiz. And one of the, the, the benefits of that is that to actually come up with three wrong answers, which is typically what they're doing, um, in the, in, related to the question or the topic, um, and one right answer is actually quite challenging and quite difficult. Um, so that in itself is a whole area of learning that, that that's, that's opening up there. For them to come in on the day and be the teachers is incredible. So um, if you've typically groups of three, four of them standing up there, they have to come up there, they have to log on, they have to set up the quiz, they need to address their audience. All the skills that they're learning there is incredible. So I have found it, the benefits of that alone is, um, is, is amazing. And from a language point of view, like the, 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 one of the, thing, the uses that I have used when I'm used setting up the quiz, the questions myself, is that the language that you use for particular covering content knowledge, how you can actually word a question in one way and then another different way, even though it's covering the same content knowledge, it's amazing the response that you get, the difference in terms of answers. I've found it's gone from 100% correct to two out of ten getting it right just because I changed the language of the question. So there's a lot of ways that you, it's a tool, how you use it is, 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 is huge, it is just growing all the time. That's a learning curve. You, you work these things out as you, like I've, I've, you have used this in total four times three times with my fourth years and once with my first years so that's <laughs> yeah and it takes it takes a while to learn your way and to feel your way through it okay thanks look i'm going to pass over to anna and fiona <laughs> pass over to lads would you please eat all the pastries and uh tea so get up and help yourselves to tea and coffees as we go okay